Greetings, Dave Herman here, alias Daz the Artist. Uh, doing one in the afternoon. Let's see, 115, 12, 18, 2018. Feel like drawing. Uh, it was a crazy morning. Sun came out, went away, came out, went away. Right now we're back into dreary at 115 already. <laughs> it's fall, folks. Hopefully on the 21st, days start to get longer as we go past the winter solstice. Hmm. <sighs> However, I didn't totally waste my morning. I did a set of Tai Chi, made myself a delicious breakfast, got my stuff in order, and here I am early in the day ready to do this because I'm going to work out tonight around 7, 7.30. Which means i got to go to the gym then. All right, so uh, what happened there? Edit, undo. thought I was in magnify. There we go. So here's my painting. And we're bringing over the, I don't know what I've got here. Some kind of a entity fembot. So I'm going to do like a fembot that's playing with her snake in the background or something. So, yeah. I do things. This cartoon's interesting. It's my first attempt at really a digital, kind of whimsical cartoon. Get the grip on it. There we go. Girl and her snake. Now when I grew up, lots of girls had snakes during the hippie times. Many of them had uh, some type of a constrictor. Corn snakes. Uh, boas. Things that they like to watch eat rats. <laughs> and they used to walk around with them outside. Take them on a car ride and stuff. <laughs> oh, the girls were so great when I grew up. They could cook and they could... And if you think this sounds chauvinistic, it doesn't. Because you ask any hippie girl that grew up, they'll be first to tell you they were smart. They could cook. They could macrame. They made clothing. We made clothing together. People traded massages. It was a way better world than it is today way better. All people have today is electronic toys. That is it. They have no social interaction to speak of. And the ones that do are very hostile. It's my opinion. And I'm going to go to my death with that one. Because I grew up in those times. And I know everyone was into making, crossing the cultural divide. The uh, language barriers the customs divides, and then you had Republicans like Nixon and people like that that just didn't want that to happen. They wanted people to be prisoners, put them in prison. You smoke pot, get 30 years for having a joint. Diabolical. So, me drawing a fembot, this would be nothing that anyone would think was uh, chauvinistic or misogynistic or... Uh, what's one of those other words they like to throw around a lot? Um, well, I don't know. Any of them. They weren't even into the someone's a woman hater and all that. They spoke. They talked about everything. They swore at guys. They wrestled you. They had a good time. They traded massages. Uh, not everything led to sex when we were kids. People just wanted to help each other out. Did yoga together. Many times, and in the Midwest where I'm from, people had multiple, multiple relationships. So you could have 10 girlfriends, a woman could have 10 boyfriends, and they all were different capacities. Like maybe you liked to fish, you had a fishing boyfriend and a girl had a fishing girlfriend or whatever. If you liked to play racquetball, if you snowshoed, if you skied, if you were someone that went fishing, you had different friends that did different things, so you didn't sleep with them all. You had friends. They were friendships. People don't do that today. And then they're so stuck up on themselves that they, no matter how you start a conversation, they think you're trying to pick them up. They could be ugly as a stick of wood, and they think, oh, this person's trying to take me to bed. It's like that is the last thing on the guy's mind, and vice versa. It seems to be okay for women to, to say whatever they want. Like if you watch a UFC weigh-in, 
the female cameraman says, right, get back on the scale, babe, to a guy. Now, if a guy would say that, it'd be all over internet media for three weeks. But it's, a, it's just ridiculous how people interact today. There's no rhyme or reason. So me drawing a fembot creation of these aliens or the Earth man or uh, whoever on this spaceship uh, that wouldn't offend anybody. Plus, we grew up with artists that were very good at doing stuff that chimed into the uh, the tiki age, like uh, you know, uh, bohemian artwork where people played the bongos and girls had the bouffant hairdos and uh, album covers had women covered with whipped cream and all that stuff. People just thought it was art. Today. People are brainless. They have no guidance when they grow up. They're feral. And they're generation after generation of feral people. The parents had no training. The kids have no training. Everyone says, just be whatever you want to be. Meanwhile, the kid never learns language, never learns anything except how to respond to a computer or a robot. And so they're robots. <laughs> if you look at art today, all over the internet is nothing more than uh, Comic-Con, soft porn art with robots. Everybody draws digital magazines with soft porn robots. It's very infantile. And uh, it's how people interact. In the same way, if you ever watch the... I'm really rambling today, but it's going to be fun. I'm going with it. So if you ever watch like uh, Anthony Bourdain, when he goes to Japan to interview the artist that draws octopus having sex with women, comic strip. Now, he goes and he finds this guy and he says, why do you do this kind of art? And he goes, well, in Japan, it's very frustrated uh, culture. And you can't talk about things, you can't do things, you can't act out. So... It's okay to have anime where things have sex, people, toys, robots, whatever, <laughs> and creatures, space people, machines, and that's a you can get away with that. So it's easy for me to be able to draw a um, comic book where the female character has sex with an octopus. Number one, that goes back in our mythology and stuff like that to uh, interactions between humans and sea creatures but more than that it's an it's a uh, it's a way for people to express their sexuality and frustration in private and not be uh, a trouble to anyone on the street <laughs> so culturally all these civilizations have made the beautiful things of humanity to be seen in the exact opposite nature as disgusting. We saw lovemaking as a beautiful thing. And you didn't have to be in love to have sex. Because that's a lie. You can have sex because it makes you feel good the same way you drink a hot chocolate because it makes you feel good. These are stimulus, you know. These are chemicals. They're things that make that affect humans. But to lie to someone and say you love them just to have sex, that's horseshit. We didn't grow up that way. So, you know, you could have different sexual partners. Everybody was safe. Did their best to stay that way. You know, I'm not going to get into teaching you about sex, but... Uh, it was a common sense. Today, people don't have any common sense. Their culture is video games. Uh, they call me up to get to my shop, and they say, how do I get there? And I say, are you calling me on a $700 uh, iPhone? Oh, no, my iPhone was like 900 bucks. I go, and does that have my Internet on there? My website, I mean? Yeah, that's how I found you. And did you read it? Because at the top is the address and directions and stuff. And you can put it into Google Map. That's why you have 
a $900 phone that does magic with maps and things so you don't have to bug somebody else. So you can be independent. So you can use your brain in interaction with technology. But nope, they don't even know where to start. And yet when they talk to you, it's they got to pull out their phone immediately. You know, oh, somebody, I'm so important, somebody's getting hold of me right now, which is probably their dog calling them up to say, when are you coming back to let me out? I have to pee. <laughs> it's a funny culture, man. So I have no qualms about drawing robots, women, anything. I'm an artist, and I have many women artist friends, and they draw naked women, and they have live models. And none of us think of it as sexist. Uh, the female body is the hardest anatomical thing to draw on the earth. And uh, trying to make a kichi here and cute and kind of like a uh, cartoon mode of the uh, the style of uh, um, the tiki time, you know. Uh, remember, as an artist, we work in all different mediums, all different ways. Today, they just copy a comic book or Spider-Man or whatever, Marvel. You know, we grew up with that stuff. And we know the original artists that drew them. Ditko and, and Stan Lee were right. Ditko was an artist. Stan Lee was a writer. Uh, all those different guys we kind of grew up with. And they got famous by accident, and they did their own thing because, well, they did it. They weren't all about the money. You know, if they wanted money, they could have done anything. They were talented people, but they went about doing their own thing. Just like I'm bungling around here for six years teaching myself digital art to finally find out where I'm going to fit. Is it going to be realistic? Is it going to be cartoon? Is it going to be... Uh, designing comps? Is it going to be uh, a sketch artist? Is it going to be a matte painter? Any company that, that puts me to work can train me in any software. Give me a challenge. I'll get it solved. I'm a problem solver and I'm from a problem solving generation. <laughs> we got big minds. We're mature. We're not frustrated. We don't worry about the stuff that people worry about today. You know, cannot have a conversation for more than three sentences just mystifies me I know the origins of it and I know why it is that way and I know what the outcome of it's going to be so more power to you guys but sooner or later there won't be anything that stimulates you because even stimulation is phony for you guys you think you're going to get a prize for everything you do. There's no prize. <laughs> That's part of the Pavlov dog training and the B.F. Skinner uh, childhood upraising that you had. We were raised more to Dr. Spock, where people touched their children. They carried their children on their shoulders. We held them in our front next to our chest. We didn't do any of the backpacking crap and leave them in a car seat in a car while you're 300 degrees outside and your kid dies and all the bullshit that I see on the earth today that shows me human beings couldn't be any dumber. They're getting dumber every day. Yeah, have opinions. What's the difference? I work for myself, okay? So there's a reason I work for myself. I want to be free. I want to be able to state what I want to state. I want to be able to learn what I want to learn. I want to take my morning, and if I feel like sleeping in, I will do that. Now, mind you, I work seven days a week not generating any income, just learning stuff. I earned it. I worked my entire life, raised children, did the whole thing. You know, worked two jobs, was a single dad. I did all that stuff. Yeah, I respect people that do it. But 
if you're in that situation, you just have to do it. That's all there is to it. It's not like you got a choice, you know. You can change the situation. But just because you're in it doesn't mean you're entitled to anything. You created the situation. Whether you say you did or didn't, you were part of every decision that brought you to the conclusion. So, bearing that in mind, myself included, I made many, 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 countless, so many mistakes, it's, it, you can't count them. Okay? And everybody that's self-employed will tell you the same thing. They lost all their money, they went broke 20 times. They didn't want to take out loans. They didn't want to pay banks. They just want to sleep under a blanket in a park and start over. And we do. Because there's something about that independence that's attractive. There's something about just being able to say to somebody, okay, I don't care what you think, man. What do you think about that? Thanks for asking me. But, you know, I'm not interested in your gibberish. <laughs> You have the right to do that when you're self-employed, you know. You don't care what you write on Facebook because your next employer is going to go there and say, well, he didn't like chihuahuas. I don't know if I want a guy in my office that doesn't like chihuahuas. They're my favorite dog. Or he spoke bad about Benji. <laughs> he doesn't like Coco the monkey. You know. They're always looking for ways to diss you, to hate you, to find something wrong with you, the next generation. When they should be perfecting their own skills before they throw a rock at anyone else. You know, people study yoga, they, they put their hands down on a mat, put their ass up in the air, and hold some kind of cockamamie pose that we never ever saw when we studied yoga. We did hatha, we did tantric, we did kundalini. We did all that stuff. Nobody wants to know. Nobody wants to talk to you about the real things. Because they learn from Bill, their buddy down the street. And he's a master. <laughs> he's the Kung Fu Yoga master. It's hilarious to me. We didn't have internet. We didn't have very many TV channels. So when you wanted to learn something, you went and sought out one of the few people that really was an expert in it and we the way we sought those out was we didn't hunt them down and bug them at their house they did tours they went around the country and they did lectures in university halls and uh, so you could meet Allen Ginsberg the poet you could meet Timothy Leary you could meet Dr. Richard Alpert you could meet Pierre Valiant you could meet Yogi Bhajan you could meet uh, you could go watch the Fifth Estate Band and be talking to them in between sets. I mean, everything was more intimate, more personal, and consequently, everyone developed personal skills. I played Frisbee with Jerry Garcia of the Grateful Dead, for anybody who follows the Grateful Dead. Didn't even know it was Jerry Garcia. We were at the... Uh, not the Fillmore, but uh, there was an equivalent of that downtown Detroit. I forget what they called it. And there were it was a music venue and a theater. And so we'd go there sometimes for music venues, music happenings. And uh, there was a guy walking around with long hair. It was uh, in between sets. It was dark. I pulled out my Frisbee from my back and uh, said, Hey, man, play some Frisbee. And it was, yeah, it was Jerry Garcia of the Grateful Dead, he went on to the set after that <laughs> and played with the band. Same thing with the Fugs, you know? They're walking around the crowd, man. Zappa, they're walking around, man. They're not... In their day, they weren't like elite people that went back and drank Cristal and, and did all that kind of crap. They were people that were just people. You know, you had a following, you sold some albums, you tried to sell enough to make a living. It wasn't like today where you have MP3s and you got an uh, infinity of ways to market yourself on the Internet if you're uh, so inclined. I hope you're watching because I don't feel like talking about the art. I'm going to talk about life. I'm going to make my little channel 
interesting. And in 2019, I think I'm going to make a completely new, completely new channel on uh, some network, not necessarily YouTube. And it might just be off my website. I've got to figure out. The only problem I have with uh, making videos and posting them is you got to post them up somewhere, like on Vimeo or Google. And the problem is then you're not in control. So if I post them myself somehow, uh, I can just play music in the background I want to hear. And I don't know anybody music money for music or nothing. I'm promoting them for free. Hello, people are listening. Just they didn't go to my channel to hear the music, but if they discover the music by being on my channel, more power to the musician who makes money when they go to buy his album. It shouldn't be a thing where I get an email that says, "Hey, you know, you played the soundtrack from so and so's album, and they're entitled to royalties." So. They'll let you do it this time. But you better watch that or we're going to ban you from the network. So having to think about that instead of how you make your art irks me. You know, my art's right here on the Internet, and I don't know what people do with it, but they're getting free lessons, as I learned, digital art, number one. And don't think these lessons aren't worth something. you got to pay for them everywhere else. I give it away. Because I had nowhere to go. And I just taught myself trial and error. So anybody watching this, if you pick up something, you can slow it down. You can stop the video. you got all kinds of ways to understand and study this stuff, man. Do not give me some rhetoric. See, she doesn't have a chin, they're going to say. Oh, she has no chin. Well, this particular one doesn't have a chin. Why? Because it looks cool without a chin. Any subtleties? Okay, save. Dun, 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 dun. Oh! Got away from me. Hit the wrong space. File. Save as. Waiting for the master. What happened? File. File. Save as. Save. Doom. Doom. Okay. Now, save the frame. To save a still of this, I use JPEGs. Save as. And JPEG. Hit any of them. And I'm up to 11 now, so I'm going to put 11. If I had another one called 11, it would tell me. That's where the power of the computer is. So, you know, screwing up, you don't have to worry about it as much, as long as you start paying attention to how you solve your problems when you screw up. All right. 23 minutes into it, having a sip of coffee. <sighs> so sacred geometry, a life of math, schooling. When I went to school as a child, in the Stone Age, back when we were just hanging out with aliens in our crib, uh, we got higher education. And here's what I mean by higher education. Our teachers taught us how to learn. What does that mean? That means when no one was around, they taught us how to have a methodology to go about learning new stuff. Now, in my day, before computers, there was a library. The library had a card box called the Dewey Decimal System. You went and you, say you were looking up a topic like building boats, ships in a bottle. 
okay? So you would look up alphabetically ships in a bottle. It would tell you where it was on a bookshelf. That was all the Dewey Decimal System was, was where do I find this on a bookshelf in a library with 10 million books? And it worked. It was in Section H, Aisle 5, Row 7, Book 4. You know what I mean? You could go find it in a matter of minutes. It was there, or it was out. And if it was out, if you couldn't find it, you went to the librarian and you said, uh, there's someone always putting books back on the shelf. Can you check and see if you have this? that I've written down and they would say sure just a minute and they could go right over to uh, their card file and tell you and then when there were computers they could just go to the computer and say because they had access to things you didn't now everyone can access it it, it said uh, yeah it's it's out Frank has it on such and such a street it should be back by November 8th uh, check with us on November 8th that was it so you learned how to learn. You had a methodology. By that, I mean you followed the steps A, B, C, D, or 1, 2, 3, 4, one after another, to get to where the end result was. And uh, if you followed those steps, then you get the result. And see, I'm trying different color combinations and things here just to see if I, I got what I want. I got like a Greek key here. That symbol is very important in the ancient civilizations. Don't know why they settle on some of these things, but they did. Okay, now I'm taking this out and putting orange in because I went one way and I was talking and I didn't think about the shape of the skull in my bot. And if you go outside and you're on a layer, just go over to your eraser on that layer, you can take it off without affecting anything else in the background. See that? I'm erasing on my layer, which is a separate piece of glass in the stack of glass layers. Imagine each layer is a plate of glass. You are working on a single plate. It's stacked above other plates. It may be under the above plates. You can draw over the under plates. You draw under the over plates. See, now I can take out stuff that you thought I was going to leave in. Because we don't know what this creature is. It's just something cool I invented. Or I invented it right before your eyes. Right before your eyes. I'll do some sfumato, some chiaroscuro with my shading and my color. Super cool. Super cool. Mm hmm. Not everything is readily discernible and you see I started to make all this cool hair stuff that's gonna happen I haven't uh, figured out where I'm going with that just yet but I throw it down as a note to myself now we go back into color and we got to be on brush we've been erasing here and there okay So see here, I'm at 29% opacity. That's how dense my paint is. 
you have 29% of the actual 100% of a color. You're only using 29% the density, the opacity. And the flow, which is air, in an airbrush, is at 19%. So it's, it's pushing the pigment at about 20% of full push. And the pigment set at about 30% of its full density. So those combinations are, are working for me at the moment. You can try different combos. So to make it get darker but fade, you start in a space and then you pull it and create the vignette, the, the faded, the degradé, as they say in French. When you go to art school, the degradé. So now all this stuff, you see, as I shape it, <clears throat> I look at it. Do I like it? I don't like it. So green is like really bugging me here. What do I want to put there? Green is not working. I'm going to go with red. And I kept the orange in there. And I'm going to make this luminous like it's a light. So I'm going to go back to black. Back to black. Not the back to black. There we go. And I'm going to pick the hard brush. The airbrush has the fuzz edge. The hard brush has a clean edge. Okay, like a, like a sharpened pencil. And I'm going to take that sharp edge and cut along here. Then I'm going to cut into here. Let me tighten this up a little. Come around here. You see all these little gesture lines I did? Um, I'm using those as a guide as I build some armature into the neck of my mechanical bot piston thing here. And if it goes too far, just take a eraser. Make sure you're on your race. And come over and wipe out whatever it is that was bugging you. You gotta go over it three times. Go ahead. See now I erased some of that. So I didn't want to erase that, so watch what happens. We go undo, step back, step back, step back, neck is returning. Edit, step back. And there we go. Now I'll make my eraser smaller and just take the line out. So I had a little too much brush. Brush got away from me. And I'll refine some of this edge. Clean it up before I detail it up. Maybe get rid of some of this hair up here. Shape this more like a head of a match head. Okay. <sighs> yeah. Back to brush. Back in black. All right. Now, I want this to be luminous. So, um, I'm going to go orange. And I'm going to go to airbrush. And I'm going to light up the edge of this kind of sickle shape. Very hard in the front and then fade it as it goes back but very hard up front and fade it into the back okay like that then i'm going to put some yellow in there now go to my yellow square over on the far left let me find my cursor i've lost it again where is it there you go over to this little square where you see the arrow and we're up here we're gonna lighten that to over here then we're gonna hit that light again right on the curve 
come down lower, stretch it back. See how it's luminous right there? Right behind her cheek. Uh, let me make the cursor bigger so you can see. So right in this area. Now we're going to kind of lighten this up. So let's go with some orange. Yep. And we're going to make the ends of these lights. And hit the yellow. Hey, and by the way, nobody take offense. It's just a conversation. The conversation's point is, teach yourself, and don't be afraid. And don't look for a prize. You may not get a prize ever for the self-learning end of it. Then again, if your goal is to make money, and you do, you get a job, well, then that's your prize day. Don't expect immediate gratification. Sometimes you got to put in literally 10,000 hours to learn something. Now, 10,000 hours divided by a 40-hour week <laughs> is 250 weeks, something like that, right? So uh, that's five years of training, you know. Uh, five years is not a long time to learn something well. I mean, to really learn it. You know, it's less, unless it's, you know, something you can learn very, very fast. Anything worth learning takes time. And uh, don't be afraid to put those hours in. you got free time. Every time you sit down to watch television or to watch a cat go by on the Internet, which... Believe me, everyone needs downtime. I need it. You need it. The whole world needs it. You could take half that time and start to learn something. I'm not telling you to take all of it, even. Take half of it and learn something. Now, as I make my stuff interesting, I'm going to connect this with wires. I'm going to use this deep shade over here, which is, let's go with this one, my color picker. And I'm going to have some external wiring. And it's going to go from here to here. See how I did that? And I'm going to have another piece go from here in a different color. If you kind of mix them up, it makes it more interesting. right there to there also I can enhance that with a little black in the hard edge realm and I can magnify this to see what I'm doing so a lot of times you got to do that. See where you're at for detail work. So see all this starting to become something. No rush, you know. There's no hurry. A lot of people think, "Oh, how'd you just sit down and do that?" Well, 
Man, I, I wish I had the ability to just sit down and do it. It didn't take me no 50, 60, 70 hours. But since it does, this is the only way I know how to do it. Because I'm inventing what I'm drawing, not copying it. The process of invention or originality is different than snagging an image off the internet and putting it on a layer and working your layers together to create something. All those things are, everything is just, you know, of course it's useful. And there's fast ways to do your job job that way if you're a matte painter or whatever. Uh, but if you're just doing original stuff like I am, it's no rush. It's your pleasure. It uh, gives you pleasure to create. Then you just kind of work on it till it manifests something cool. Hmm. There we go. There we go. Hey, what about it? There we go. Swatches. There we go. There we go. There we go. Mm -hmm. Going on here. There we go. I say, I say, communication device. There we go. File save. And this uh, view fit on the screen. She kind of looks cool in the background now. See? I'll take a minute break. I'll be right back. <laughs>